This broadcast is brought to you by the British Israel Church of God. Mr. Trump, in a recent interview with the Washington Post, you said that the U.S. should become a diminishing presence in NATO. Why, why do you think that the U.S. Okay. should start to withdraw their world presence from NATO, and what would you change about the organization so that we could remain involved? Okay. NATO is obsolete. It was 67 years, or it's over 60 years old. Uh, it is many countries doesn't cover terrorism, okay? It covers the Soviet Union, uh, which is no longer in existence. And NATO has to either be rejiggered, rechanged, you know, changed for the better. I'm not saying the other thing that's bad about NATO, we're paying too much. We're spending a tremendous billions and billions of dollars on NATO. You're I understand this stuff. I mean, I really do understand this stuff. NATO is obsolete. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be rejiggered and it can't be fixed and made good or and for you it's that's possible. largely a financial component that when you talk about rejiggering paying too it? much you have countries in nato i think it's 28 countries okay. you have countries in nato that are getting a free ride and it's unfair it's very unfair the united states cannot afford to be the policeman of the world anymore folks we have to rebuild our own country we have to stop with this stuff you and they're ripping off the united states and they're ripping you off i don't care i, I don't want to do that Either they pay up, including for past deficiencies, or they have to get out. And if it breaks up NATO, it breaks up NATO. I mean, you know, they bring up, as an example, they bring up the Ukraine. The Ukraine. I have many friends live in the Ukraine. I have great people live in the Ukraine. Ukraine's great. The problem is this. I never hear any of the 27 talking about the Ukraine. The only one talks about the Ukraine. The only one is the United States. The Watchman Program, Evangelist and Commentator Peter Salemi, bringing you the truth about today's world news in the light of Bible prophecy. The current presidential candidate Donald Trump says that NATO is obsolete that the United States cannot afford to be a global cop any longer. Now, Fox News came out with an article by J.D. Gordon, who quotes a presidential, a Pentagon spokesman, rather, who has been stationed in Europe and Asia for the past 20 years, and he agrees with Donald Trump. He says, I believe Donald Trump is 100% correct. We can't be the world's policeman forever. We can't afford it. We are $19 trillion in debt and our national infrastructure is crumbling literally. He says, anybody see the current pictures of the once mighty prosperous industrial cities like Detroit, Gary, Indiana, or Akron, Ohio, Ohio, or urban decay in places like Philadelphia, Baltimore, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Ferguson? Isn't it time to do some nation building at home because they foot the bill for, for NATO, it's costing them multiple billions of dollars, and they can use that to rebuild America's infrastructure instead. So they're looking towards America first and other people later. Then it says, let's take a look at some facts. NATO is an alliance of 28 nations with a population of, mo of more than 910 million. America makes up a third of that population, yet pays nearly three-quarters of the defense expenditures. Each country is supposed to pay 2% of their GDP on defense, yet only America, the UK, Greece, Estonia, and Poland are currently meeting their obligations. Now, Defense Secretary Robert Gates says on NATO, it says its future is dim, if not dismal. Now, Current uh, leaders are saying basically the same thing. I'll quote to you some of them here. Secretary of State John Kerry says every ally spending less than 2% of their GDP, GDP needs to dig deeper and make a concrete commitment to do more. I'm talking about NATO. Chuck Hagel, Secretary of Defense, says if the American people do not see European nations stepping forward to invest in their own defense, when their own security is threatened, we risk eroding U.S. support for the alliance. Norwegian Defense Minister Eriksson Soriad says, 
European allies need to spend more money on defense. And then Susan Rice says, we expect every ally to pull its full weight through increased investment in defense and upgrading our alliance for the future. Europe needs to take defense spending seriously and meet NATO's benchmark. So current governmental leaders are saying that the same thing that Donald Trump is saying. But Donald Trump is also saying that NATO is obsolete. And they're saying either to get rid of it or modernize it. Now, NATO is having currently going to have a summit in Warsaw, Poland. And the agenda seems to be at this summit is for the alliance to take, it says here, the summit will take place at a critical time for our alliance, a time when our security and our values are facing significant challenges from the South and the East. And that's, of course, down in the United States, uh, down in the Middle East, and, of course, on the eastern side at the borders of Russia. It says, it says, I expect leaders at Warsaw to agree on an enhanced forward presence in the east of the alliance, including multinational battalion-sized units provided by European and North American allies. Verschbo stressed that NATO should also intensify efforts to project stability beyond borders by working with partners to build their ability to defend themselves. And it's also speaking about Montenegro becoming the latest member of the alliance. This NATO summit will take place on July 8th through the 9th. And the Polish president says that this summit should also emphasize Poland's security. It says, as Supreme Commander of Poland's Armed Forces, he says... He was especially concerned about the nation's security in the face of a resurgent Russia. We need a greater presence of NATO in this part of Europe. He vowed to press for more NATO security guarantees at the group summit in Warsaw. And he also says that Poland's, Poland also wants to see NATO bases in Poland and they are also going to talk to the European partners about including Poland in, U in the Ukraine peace talks. And then it says, he says next year's, uh, he says the NATO summit in Warsaw is, they want to reinforce the alliance's presence in Poland uh, and across a region that feels threatened by a resurgent Russia. So Russia, Poland is really pushing for and really relies upon NATO presence in Poland, and that is very, very significant. It re actually relies on NATO for its survival. Now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Poland, their website says that according to the majority of Poles, our membership in NATO has a direct impact on the improvement of our country's security. Similarly, Two-thirds of Poles have a positive opinion about NATO's activities aimed at peacekeeping and armed conflict prevention over the last couple of years. It says Poland's membership in the world's strongest military alliance gave our country not only security guarantees provided for the Article 5 of the Washington Treaty, but also increased the position of Poland on the international stage. So Poland really depends upon really depends upon NATO for its, for its security. And that is very significant when it comes to Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy says that Poland will, be, will rely on NATO for its security, but that NATO will collapse. And after it collapses, NATO, Poland rather, is going to go into a time of national collapse and it will be invaded by enemies, and Poland will be occupied by a foreign power. Now, before I get on with these prophecies, I want to offer you this free booklet, uh, Poland in Prophecy, free of charge, off our website, britishisrael.ca. Now, if you want a hard copy of this booklet, Bill Pitsinas will give you the addresses and phone numbers where you can obtain this free material. To get your free literature, please write to us at 
the British Israel Church of God. Our Canadian address is 7581 Jane Street, Suite 201K, Concord, Ontario, Canada, postal code L4K1X3. Our USA address is 171 West Barbara Avenue, Pahrump, Nevada, postal code 89060. Or log on to our website at www.britishisrael.ca. Or if you'd like to use it by telephone, Peter Slemmy's phone number is area code 905-447-4415. Or myself, Bill Petsinas, at area code 416-898-7407. In Jeremiah the 25th chapter, Almighty God tells Jeremiah that there is coming a judgment of the nations. And then God lists many, many nations that are going to fall under his judgment. And one of those nations is Elam. And the Elamites of the Bible, their descendants are the Poles, the Serbs, and the Croats today. And we prove that to you in that booklet, Poland, in Prophecy. Then in Jeremiah, the 49th chapter, here Jeremiah prophesied about the coming collapse of Elam, and it is supposed to take place, as it clearly says in verse 39, in the latter days. That's our day today. Now notice what God says in verse 35. He says, Thus says the Lord Eternal, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. Now, Gill's commentary says about this, the chief of their might, he says, their great strength and security lay, in which they put their trust and confidence, the chief of their might, which may be interpreted by way of apposition of their bow, the chief instrument of their might and power. And who does Poland rely on for their security and their might? NATO. And I quoted you something earlier, but I quote to you another article here by Bartosz Marcinkowski in his article, Why a NATO Presence is So Important for Poland. He says, soon after the fall of communism in Poland in 1989, NATO membership became a key priority for the Polish decision makers. Ten years later, later after Poland joined the alliance, the European Union was the next global was the next goal which it joined in 2004. It seemed that the Poles could finally enjoy both security and prosperity. To the Poles, NATO is a key pillar of its national security and seen almost as important as their national army. So they rely heavily upon NATO for their security. NATO is the chief of their might. And God says, I will break the bow of Elam. Almighty God says that NATO is going to break apart. And as I read to you earlier, we see the complaints of, the, of America of t saying to the other European nations that they have to pull, they have to spend more for their defense. And that Donald Trump is threatening to pull out of NATO because it just costs America too much money. And so NATO is divided as it always has been since the inception of NATO back in 1949. And the Bible prophesied in Daniel the second chapter verse 2 that NATO will be the divided. It says of the potter's clay phase that the kingdom shall be divided till eventually it will break apart, which the Bible says here that it will. Notice what it says in the, the K&D commentary about this breaking of the bow of Elam. It says, to break the bow in pieces is thus equivalent to rendering it defenseless. So when NATO breaks apart, Poland will be defenseless. And when that happens, then God says that he will send enemies into Poland. In verse 36, it says, upon Elam... And this is when God breaks the bow of Elam, NATO fought, breaks apart, N uh, Poland is literally defenseless. It says, upon Elam, will I break the four, upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four corners of heaven 
and I will scatter them towards all those winds, and there shall be no nation, whether the outcasts of Elam shall not come. Now these four winds are symbols of enemies that are going to attack Poland from all sides, as it says in verse 37. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life. And I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, says the Eternal. And I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. So enemies are going to come from all sides, come in, and Poland will not be a nation any longer. It will be occupied by a foreign power. And it's as it says here in the... CEV translation of the Bible, enemies will attack from all directions, as it says in verse 37. And so Elam will be occupied by a foreign power. Now, who is going to be that foreign power? Well, when you look at Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, it talks about Babylon coming to execute God's judgment on these nations. But this is in the latter days. And it speaks of Babylon, end-time Babylon, and that end-time Babylon is going to be the beast power that's going to arise when the potter's clay phase of Daniel 2 comes to an end, which is NATO and the EU, then will rise the beast, the end-time Babylonish system, and it's going to be led by Germany. And Germany is going to attack Poland from all sides and occupy it. In Isaiah, the 21st chapter, here we see another prophecy, and this prophecy is actually describing the attack of Babylon, the end-time beast, into Elam and Media. And Media, when you look at history, it shows that Media, when they migrated into their new land, they became the White Russians or the Bielorussians, and it talks about Elam, which are the modern-day Polish people today. It says this in Isaiah, the 21st chapter, verse 2. It says, a grievous vision is declared unto me. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacher treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. And all commentaries will tell you that that is Babylon. Now, when you notice in verse 9, it says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And you can read that in Revelation 14, chapter verse 8, and Revelation 18, verse 2. Speaking of the end time Babylon. So obviously, this prophecy is set in the end time. And it says, Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media. Now, in this book by Marvin Allen Sweeney, page 281, uh, with a, an introduction to prophetic literature, he says in the Hebrew that is actually that the spoiler goes up to Elam and Media and attacks them when you look at the Hebrew. So it is the spoiler that goes up to Elam and besieges Media. So here we see the end time Babylonian beast of prophecy going up against Elam and besieging it and besieging the Bielorussians as well. And you read in Numbers the 24th chapter verse 22 that the Assyrian invades U the Ukraine as well in that prophecy and everybody and uh, we have been proving for for years now that the Assyrian which is end time Germany is going to lead a ten nation combine possibly called the United States of Europe and it is called the beast power and this beast power is going to go into Elam and the Ukraine and Bielorussia going into Eastern Europe once again and occupying it occupying these nations and putting these nations in slavery and captivity and actually serving in their army, as we shall see. It goes on to say, And all the sighing thereof have I made to cease. And the sighing means that the captive Elamites and the Medes, uh, they will cease sighing when Babylon falls, as it says in verse 9. Now, in Isaiah, the 22nd chapter, here we see another prophecy. And it's talking about the day of trouble, verse 5, in this valley of vision. And in verse 6, it says this, And Elam bare the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Ker uncovers the shield. Now, these people of Ker 
are the Kermen, and the ancient Kermen are the modern-day Germans today. And obviously, these Kermen are in charge of the army, and it says that Elam bears the quiver. Now, what does that mean? The Church of God Commentary, page 30, says, This would seem to indicate that Elam attacking, but perhaps not. It says Elam bore the quiver which could indicate that it is serving another army, perhaps even by compulsion, which would make sense if this applied to the ancient Assyrian army, which likely had Elamites and other peoples pressed into involuntary service. So they, after Elam is occupied by the beast power, the Elamites are serving in this army as obviously slaves, and they bore the quiver. Now, this means, bearing the quiver, means, Gill's commentary, a case of arrows. Arrows, of course, are projectiles. Now, the prophet is not going to say missiles. He's going to use the language of his day. And so, it seems to indicate here that Elam bear the quiver, that this nation of Elam, the Poles, are going to be a place where the beast power is going to stockpile weapons. And already today, NATO, its missile shield defense system is in Poland today. So they're already stockpiling weapons. NATO's already stockpiling weapons in Poland. And this is going to continue when NATO breaks apart and the beast power takes over Poland. So Elam is going to be a place where they are going to stockpile weapons. Now notice, it says in verse 7, It shall come to pass that the choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. Now this is speaking of Jerusalem. And it says in verse 8, And he discovered, or as the JFB commentary says, he dismantled the covering of Judah. This end time beast dismantled the covering of Judah or the protection of Judah. And what protects Judah? Well, NATO. In Daniel the 11th chapter verse 45, we see NATO occupying we see NATO occupying Israel. And this beast power dismantles NATO. NATO is going to break apart. It says all your allies, Jeremiah the 30th chapter verse 14, all your allies have forgotten you. Germany and all the rest of the allies will dismantle NATO. It will come to an end. It says he dismantled the protection of Judah and thou, and thou meaning Judah, did look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. And that means the, that Judah will look to its own army to protect itself from the coming beast power that's going to try and occupy Israel, which they will. And so we see Elam, the nation of Elam, Poland, NATO is going to break apart, they're going to be defenseless, and they're going to serve in the beast army. And that nation is going to be a place where it's going to be a place where the Germans will stockpile weapons, and in Isaiah the 11th chapter, we also see it's going to be a place where the Israelites are going to be held captive in concentration camps as well. So this is the future of the Poles, the Serbs, and the Croats. Now, in closing, I just want to just list to you some of these prophecies about the coming collapse of NATO. I keep insisting Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse 45, is the most crucial prophecy, the next great prophetic event that's going to happen. It speaks here of the king of the north. And that king of the north, if you read our booklet, Middle Eastern Prophecy, and you can download it off our website free of charge, that king of the north we prove to you is NATO, and NATO is led by the United States. And so the president of the United States is the king of the north. And it says, He, the king of the north, NATO, shall plant the tabernacles of his palace, those are, that's military occupation, military bases, between the seas and in the glorious 
holy mountain. Now, I find this interesting. Fox News, this article by Adam Shaw says that Obama is going to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv by 2017. And in another article by the Israeli uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it says that Israel is to open an office at NATO's headquarters in Brussels. And it says this is an important step in enhancing Israel's security. So we are seeing by these moves, by the governments of the America and Israel, we are moving towards this prophecy of eventually NATO occupying Israel between the seas and in the glorious holy mountain. And then it says, when that happens, he shall come to his end and none shall help him. NATO will break apart, as it says in Jeremiah the 30th chapter, verse 14. It says lovers, but the Moffat translation has allies. And then it says, and let me just go to it right quickly, in Jeremiah 30, verse 14, it says this, All your allies have forgotten you, they seek you not. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins were increased. When they see that wound, the allies are going to abandon NATO. Now that wound, who, who uh, executes this wound against the NATO alliance? In Numbers, the 24th chapter, verse 24, it says this, The ship shall come from the coasts of Kittim. Kittim we have identified as modern-day China. And it, notice it's a naval attack. And we see the problems in the South China Sea escalating by the day the United States is out there saber-rattling, and the Chinese don't like it. China is threat threatening military action against the United States. The ship shall come from the coast of Kittim and shall afflict, that's the deadly blow, Asher, which is modern-day Germany, and afflict Eber. And those are the Hebrew peoples, the modern-day peoples of the United States, the British Commonwealth, the peoples of NATO. Germany and the Hebrews have a common enemy, which is China. Obviously, it is the NATO alliance. And so, here we see the deadly blow administered by China, and when that blow happens, the alliance will break apart. So, the next great prophetic event is Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse 45. When we see that, then we will see all these events take place. NATO will break apart, and the Poles will be defenseless, the beast power will rise, it will attack Poland on all sides, and the Poles will serve in the beast's army as slaves. Get this free booklet, Poland in Bible Prophecy, free of charge, off our website, britishisrael.ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends, and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.